Hello Judith, it's lovely to speak with you today. So let's start from the beginning. What inspired you to become a physician and a psychiatrist? Well, I come from a, a family of 25 physicians. And it's interesting because my mother and father are both physicians and I have so many physicians in my family. But I really didn't have any desire to become a physician. And I always thought I was more of a creative person. But then when my, not that being a physician isn't also creative, but then in my early 20s, um, I was beginning to get in touch with my intuition, and I suddenly had a strong instinct that I needed to go to medical school and that that was really my destiny. And so I began taking medical courses, and um, one, you know, I just loved loved uh, the pre-med, and so that led to 14 years of medical training. And so my mission really is to combine traditional medicine with intuition and um, more of a, a sense of spirituality and energy medicine. Can you tell us a bit about your current role, please? Well, my current role is that I'm an MD, I'm a psychiatrist, I'm an assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at UCLA, and I supervise residents at UCLA teaching them you know, how to integrate intuition into patient care. And I'm also an author, and I write um, many books on this topic, including Emotional Freedom, um, and I have a private practice where I see patients um, always integrating traditional medicine you know, with intuition and a sense of spirituality and, and energy. And what was your inspiration behind your book, Emotional Freedom? Well, the world is in the midst of an emotional meltdown, and there, there's an epidemic of exhaustion because there's so much stress in the world. And I wanted to write a book where I could give people tools how to handle the different emotions from a very positive point of view um, and also how to deal with the forces that drain them, including people I call energy vampires, people who suck you dry, learning how to set very clear boundaries with them, learning how to do powerful um, energy and time management so that, you know, particularly, you know, physicians and also my patients, they come in so drained that with these tools, then, you know, they could enjoy their life more and learn how to deal with emotions. I have different chapters in the book, how to deal with frustration, depression, um, anxiety, and how to turn those around to develop more compassion and joy. What benefits do you find that social media brings to you as a physician? Well, so social media is a core part of how I get my message out. You know, I have, gosh, I think you know, maybe 15,000 people on Facebook and coming up to 20,000 on Twitter. And it's just an amazing way to get information out in a short kind of soundbite kind of way and uh, summon a community. And I have so many people who are, you know, responding and come to my Facebook and Twitter pages, you know, as a source of information but also as a, a source of dialogue and conversation. So I'm a big lover of social media, and I use it all the time. And what are the challenges in your experience to using social media? Well, with YouTube in particular, it's I mean I, I love what I what I love about YouTube is the lack of censorship. But there's also you know people who you know there's a lot of anger and hostility on you know some of the you know the <laughs> on YouTube. So they you know the <laughs> comments that they leave you know, but they give you the option to delete them. Um, but I, I think, you know, on the whole, it's wonderful because I believe in, in free speech and lack of censorship. So, you know, the, the great thing is you always have the option to delete anything that's inappropriate um, mm. or hostile. Your biography says that you passionately assert that we have the power to transform negative emotions and achieve inner peace. Why is this so important in this day and age? Oh, this is so vital to our well-being. You know, as a psychiatrist, I believe that we are entitled to happiness and joy. And we have to learn how to find this in the midst of the stressful, fearful times that we live in um, so that no matter what is happening on the outside, we can have that sense of peace and enjoyment in the moment, you know, with our lives and really focus on what matters in terms of love and friendship and enjoyment and uh, also, you know, I look at emotions as a spiritual path, how they can help. You know, learning about depression can teach you about how to bring light into darkness. Learning about frustration and 
can teach you how to learn patience. Um, dealing with anger can help you find compassion. So you know, I believe that difficult emotions are a springboard to learn about and transform into more positive emotions. Are there any ways, in your opinion, that pharma can better engage with physicians? Well, I personally feel that if pharma could be more sensitive or increase the sensitivity to <clears throat> the energetic and intuitive needs of patients, I mean, I believe that some patients don't need the whopping big doses that are in the PDR, you know, especially a lot of the patients I work with, because I work with a, a lot of what I call an emotional freedom empath. Empaths uh, have very sensitive systems. Uh, and they tend to absorb the stress of others into their own bodies. And so they can have a lot of uh, various symptoms, mystery symptoms that medicine can't readily diagnose or else over-medicate. And so a lot of these patients of mine, and I discuss empathy and emotional freedom, they require a much lower dose. So I would love to see more of a spectrum of dosage with some things, particularly with antidepressants and you know, anti-anxiety is that you don't have to use those whopping doses because that will blow away empaths mm -hmm. and they'll never want to take anything again. So more sensitivity to the, the level of dosages and what can work in smaller doses is for, for many patients. Your Huffington Post blog posts are usually around giving people advice on how to listen to your own self, stay positive, and treat others how you wish to be treated. Do you think this advice could help to improve communication within the pharma industry? I absolutely do. I mean, I think if you listen to each other with respect and you hear each other with opposing points of view with respect and an open mind, that if you have that healing dialogue going on, that there could be you know, an incredible um, affiliation between pharma and physicians, that it doesn't have to be adversarial, that it can be in service to the patients and listening to new ideas on both ends about how to best be in service of, of patients. So, yes, I definitely think it's important to stay positive and to treat others how you would like to be treated rather than make things adversarial. Finally, what do you think the future for physicians and pharma will be like? Hopefully they'll work hand-in-hand hand as allies. You know, that would be the most positive outcome, and that everyone in healthcare and all the practitioners and all the elements of, of helping people, these are sacred elements in terms of patient care. And to serve the patients the best, everybody needs to listen to one another and work together in service of the patients. You know, and if that's the goal, if that's the primary goal, then I, I think everything will work out well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in cooperation, collaboration, listening to new ideas, even if there's disagreement. So I think that, you know, in the future, if that can happen, that would be very positive for the patients we're treating and for us. Thank you for your time today, Judith. Oh, you're very welcome.